Hello, my name is Millie Thompson and I will be doing my oral presentation for my proposal for this assessment. My proposal for this assignment is to answer the question, how do high profile autobiography pieces represent their own self identity? This question comes from my interest in famous works such as Drew Barrymore's Little Girl Lost, Anne Frank's Diary of a Young Girl, Sigmund Freud's autobiography study, and Susan Crayson's Girl Interrupted. Since all of these works are either autobiographies or have some autobiographical nature, I believe that it would be appropriate to analyse how self-identity can be represented through the different styles that autobiographies can take. These different styles, which are included in the works already noted, include private diary entries, inner monologue and a stream of consciousness. If possible, within my word count, I would also like to go into the idea that this representation of self-identity is not necessarily the whole narrative, but instead something that the author can cherry pick to create their own representation for their audience to take in. This notion of cherry picking can provide an unreliable narrative, or in this case, an unreliable sense of identity. I believe it would also add to the argument of this essay by noting that self-identity is readily represented by the audience when they have a full access to the author's inner thoughts as they can do through autobiographies. Possible points to investigate, which I would like to go in through main body paragraphs in my essay, um, would include the self is multiple, how we entangle ourselves with others, shifting views of ourselves and how the feminist theory com comes into um, when a woman owns their own story through their autobiography. These are all points that have been covered um, through lecture materials. For example, Anne Frank's The Diary of a Young Girl speaks of identi identity um, all throughout the book. She speaks how she identifies herself in comparison to the Germans and also in comparison to her own family. Um, this comparison shows how we entangle ourselves with others. And even though she speaks of such entanglement, it doesn't always mean that she's liking herself to another group, but just how she views herself mingling and how she fits into these two other groups. Um, and she also comments that identity can be changed. And a great quote that um, was found within this book um, can add to my argument really well. And that quote is, to be honest, I can't imagine how anyone could say I'm weak and then stay that way. If you know that about yourself, why not fight it? Why not develop your character? This quote represents that self-identity can Self-identity can be seen as a multiple. It is not singular and does not need to fit one mould to be represented honestly. It also shows that identity is constantly evolving and shifting and does not need to be fixed or stagnant. Two scholarly sources that I'll rely on to strengthen my argument uh, will be Smith and Watson's reading autobiography and Brockmeyer and Donald's narrative and identity studies in autobiography, self and culture. Reading autobiography looks at life narrative with historical perspectives, which will help the analysis of primary texts when I'm looking at this essay. The previous example that I used with Anne Frank's work focus heavily on the time period um, in which the events took place and therefore studying the historical perspective would be really necessary in me building my argument. Brockmere and Donnell look at the theoretical perspective of autobiography identity, identity as life stories in cultural context and narrative identity of past and present. These topics will help me explain identity and look deeper into the fact that the past and present identities can be changing, much as we I discussed earlier with the same example. I believe that this essay can be really strong with these resources and look forward to any feedback so that I can make it a great piece of academic writing. Thank you for your time.